Some folks love him, some folks hate him, but rest assured, he's very popular and he covers everything from soup to nuts and from votes to butts. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Lord Goddess, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. I've wanted to talk about this guy since I started doing videos and commenting on news and cultural events. Tim Pool can be very informative, but he can also be a little bit frustrating. I believe that sometimes he's even a bit naive, although not as much anymore. When I first started watching him, a lot of what he would say sounded like it came from a person who either had no experience with some of the things he was talking about, or he just was another lefty that some things had not happened to yet. I am in the habit, and always have been, of listening to everyone's opinion. So I kept watching him along with all the other folks that I watch now. In fact, he actually, I actually discovered him before I discovered Salty. However, I have watched this man red pill himself while trying to remain a milk toast fence sitter. I actually enjoyed that because it told me that people can change their minds about things as long as their mind is open. And he has always seemed like an open-minded person to me. He did frustrate me sometimes because some of his videos, he would go through a whole video and tell you about how things are and how things are going to happen and then turn right back around and say, but it could go the other way and I don't know, it might happen, but then again, it might not. So that was his way of milk toast fence setting after he had already told you pretty much how he felt about this stuff. The fact that he covers these things tells me that they're important to him. These are the bricks that he lays. Then he started doing the IRL podcast. It looked to me like he was getting paid royally for one of the most wishy-washy type of people on the internet. But he was popular because he played both sides. If he would have been adamant in one way or another, he probably would have lost a lot of his audience and sometimes in one fell swoop until he became enemy number one to his side, which he will tell you his side left him, not the other way around, kind of like Reagan did in his first political campaign ever. How did he do this? First, he went from anti-gun to full throttle to a advocate, especially after Steven Crowder gave him a handgun complete with lessons and target practice, Oh, and when the riots and everything came close to his home near D.C., and then, of course, even more so, now that he keeps getting swatted. How many times has it been now? Hmm, as of this recording, nine? That's a lot. Yeah, it sounds like he needs some really good security these days. Then he started pointing out how much the establishment media lies and coddles criminals and politicians. Then... He voted for Trump. He hated that man, and kinda still does in some aspects. Not polite enough for him, I guess. But then again, who is these days? But he voted for him due to his policies that actually helped to make him rich. Or should I say richer? He does brag about how much uh, Disney had paid him to do nothing until his contract was up, but uh, don't get me distracted. He also voted for him due to his lack of warmongering. It isn't a bad thing to actually get along with your enemies. You know the old cliche, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. In the video that caught my attention, uh, Tim's quest to prove that yet another example of the falseness and absurd protection that establishment media and our politicians use for our grandpa-in-chief. <laughs> 
he got, in my opinion, a little silly. But then again, what he was covering was a little silly too. I believe by now everyone remembers this. Well, in order to analyze this... God bless you all. Tim actually had to go back and explain the bird poop story. I mean, he even went as far as to analyze the spread and the consistency and just a whole diatribe of about this bird poo, which basically he said, why didn't they just say, so what? He even gave a little antidote of his own of almost getting pooed on himself when he visited the Daily Wire the other day. Well, I'll let the man explain it to you himself. This is not a story about Joe Biden appearing to be befuddled because, well, I'm sure by now most of you realize that Joe Biden, if anything, is a befuddled man. No, this story, this segment, is about how the media constantly tries to protect a man who is so out of his gourd, I can't imagine he'll actually run in 2024. There's another story that we must tackle. Bird poops on Biden as he claims US is in dumps because of Putin. Did a bird actually poop on Joe Biden? Well, upon watching a video, it does seem the splatter does happen on Joe Biden's shoulder, on his just above his lapel. Now, the mainstream media is saying it is it is not bird poop. You are wrong, New York Post. It is but corn, which makes no sense. I mean, it might make sense because they're like he was standing next to a pile of corn talking about ethanol. But why would corn splatter? Why would it bounce off and splatter from straight overhead? Oh, I think we can break this one down. I'm walking into the Daily Wire headquarters the other day and about five feet in front of me, I, I hear a and I'm like, I say, and then I look, I look over and there's bird poop right there on the ground. And I was like, that was close. And then I look up at the, at the roof and sure enough, I see a little bird butt, assuming the bird pooped on him. I'm going to go after the media for lying about it and trying to come up with any reason why a bird didn't poop on him instead of just being like, who cares? So the White House said it wasn't bird poop. I don't know if it was bird poop, but let me show you some. Here's a slow motion video capturing the moment of impact. There it goes. I think it's fair to say that whatever hit Joe Biden was to a degree granular. But hold on there a minute. They said some kind of corn byproduct. You see, what Snopes is doing is trying to make it seem more plausible that it's corn. Let me just give you the simple answer. Could a bird have eaten a ton of the corn and then pooped out a combination of poop and corn? Yeah. And so here's my here's here's my case. Your Honor, I present to you a photo from Exhibit A. The point of impact on Joe Biden's lapel shows that whatever hit maintained its integrity at the site of impact and then trickled downward. That is to say, I would argue that there may be a viscous material binding some of these corn particles, which is why they would argue a corn byproduct and not outright corn. You see? Now, why would a corn byproduct fly up in the air and fall straight down on Biden? I don't know. Based on that, I can only go with what I do know. Birds eat corn. It's not good for them. The bird might poop out a large quantity of it, and then it would have some viscous poop or urea mixed in with it, and we would consider it to be bird poop. You'll get pooped on. Mark my words, one of these days, a bird will poop on you, and then you're going to sit there and be like, I should have made fun of Biden. It's very seldom that Tim makes me laugh, but this one did it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he was being facetious the whole time because, as he says, blah, 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 lies, lies, lies. I'm sick of it. So I just wanted to show you that this guy covers almost everything. And in some cases, rarely, he can be hilarious. I just thought this one was one of his better silly ones, if you will. It was definitely silly to me, and it made me laugh out loud. I still watch him because 
He will be the first person to tell you to not just believe whatever it is he says. Go do your own research. And anyone that does that is usually telling you the truth. What do you think of all of his coverages? I do know that some people really don't like him. They think that they've caught him in lies and all that other. Uh, basically, uh, he doesn't seem to have a whole lot to hide. One thing about him, love him or hate him, he's a very dedicated and very disciplined person. At least he seems to be. His shows are always on time. He always has seems to be prepared for whatever it is he's going to be doing. He just seems to have it all together. Of course, that is his camera persona, and you never know. But again, the personal part isn't isn't the problem. Uh, it's not what I care about. I care about whether or not he's getting the right message out there, and whether or not he lives he loves this country or not. Left or right, I don't really care, but he doesn't sound very much like a lefty anymore. Perhaps he's learned his lesson, and I hope he continues to be funny. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Please give me a call on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time on my call-in talk show, Talk To Me America, and let me know what you think of the videos and things that I put out there. Uh, I will show you some cool stuff. I go over some of the articles for the week, the news for the week, and of course I take your phone calls and get you out there so that you can continue to exercise your freedom of speech. It is very, very important, especially at this time in our history, and I'd like to be a part of your freedoms. At least helping to get them out there. Of course, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, a comment, and a donation would be the ultimate. All my links are below! Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!